Bible, and uh, he was reading Isaiah chapter 53. And, uh, pardon me, move over, Al. Okay. So, uh, like many folks, they read the scripture and don't understand it. Does that make sense? Yeah. They read it and go, what's this, what's, this, what, what's, all, what's going on here? So, it turns out that Isaiah chapter 53 is all about the Messiah. It's all about Jesus. And uh, so Philip got in the guy's chariot and he said, you know what you're reading? This is way cool. He said, how can I accept somebody guide me? Well, that's what I am. I'm the guy. All right? So I'm going to help you understand all of this. He said, how can I accept some man guide me? And he says he started at the same scripture, and instead of just reading an obscure story, he said, this is talking about Jesus. This is talking about Jesus. This is talking about Jesus. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace is upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And so all we like sheep have gone astray, it says. We turned everyone, everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Well, now we can see the connection between that scripture and Jesus. Because when he died on the cross, the Lord laid on him the iniquity of the song, all by sin. And this is written 750 years B.C. And so this Ethiopian eunuch, I suspect, having heard what's going on in Jerusalem, and a lot of things happening there, and, and they, they took this Messiah, and they killed him, and we don't know who it is, and how does this thing work, and they're doing some baptism over there. What? what I, I don't know what's going on. So he said... Well, and the Bible says, and it came to a certain water. Now, sometimes the Bible is very vague, just at the right time. It doesn't say he came to the Jordan River. Because if it said that, then we would all think we have to go over there and get baptized. It just said certain water. My best guess is, it doesn't swear, near as clean as this water, even though, uh, yeah, it's uh, okay. And uh, But it says... They, he said to Philip, he said, uh, here's water. What do I have to do to get baptized? Now that's a point blank question. What do I have to do to get baptized? And here comes the point blank answer. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ you make? So, what's the requirement for baptism? You've got to be a believer. You have to have already said, I believe that he's the Son of God and that uh, I, I, I'm in. I, I, I'm a believer. I'm giving my heart to him. I'm a believer. And uh, so he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Well, that's a good statement. I mean, that's... And we assume that he wasn't just giving a mental assent we assume that he was talking from his heart. And I, there's a significant difference between what you believe up here and what you believe down here. You know what I'm saying? It just, it, it just matters big time. Yeah, I believe that. Or no, I believe. I believe. And it said, okay, so they, they both went down into the water. So we know it was enough water for two people to get into. Right? can't tell you much more than that. Uh, when I was pastoring in Massachusetts, we used to baptize in a horse trough. Just enough water to get into two people, and one to baptize the other. And the word baptize means immerse. Baptize means immerse. So he got down to there, and he immersed him. It just so happens that baptism is really the symbol of Christianity. Did you know that? <laughs> you thought it was the cross, didn't you? I mean, we all wear crosses, and that's symbolic of we hope our faith. But you know, on the day Jesus was crucified, there were three crosses. Which one are you identifying with? The thief on the right hand or that didn't repent, the thief on the left hand that did, or the one in the... Actually, baptism symbolizes more than just death. Because what it symbolizes is death 
burial, and resurrection. So when we baptize someone, we say, buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in the newness of life. So what we're really doing is declaring ourselves, we're making a declaration that I am now a follower of Jesus, and I'm going to let him guide my life. I'm going to let him lead me along the path. Not just help me with my addiction, but guide my whole life. And so I'm signing on to do that. And uh, when a person does that, he does it because he has already opened his heart to Jesus. And now he's saying, I'm a follower. It's quite the declaration. Now in our country, it's no big deal. We could do this all day long, you know, who cares? <laughs> But in many other countries, it is a very big deal. You do such a thing like this in North Africa, where I'm going in a couple of months, uh, this is a big deal. Uh, it's a declaration that you <laughs> want to be careful who you tell, uh, because over there it'll get your head cut off, especially if your name was Muhammad. So I got to tell you a story. Years ago, I met this guy named Muhammad, and uh, his last name was Tahir. He said, I was in Ethiopia, and here's what happened to me. He said, uh, 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 somebody gave me a little New Testament, and actually it was nothing more than a Gospel of Mark. So he said, I took this whole Gospel of Mark because as a good Muslim, you always graciously receive whatever <coughs> people give you. And so he said, okay, I'll take it. And he put it in his pocket, and he found out that it was just the right size, and he could carry it with him, and uh, it... Um, use it for toilet paper because over there you're a little shortage you know what I'm saying and so he would go along each day and tear off a cup he was using it for toilet paper and somebody found out what he was doing they said Muhammad you can't do that what have you lost your mind he said that's God's word and he said really he said yes it is and he said uh, wow I better I better get some more of that and start reading it because I just all real stuff they went back to the guy that gave it to him, and he gave him a little Gospel of John. So the Gospel of John now, he's starting to read it and saying, this is God's Word, this is God's Word, this is God's Word. When he got to chapter 14, oh my, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. And uh, he went, wow, what am I going to do with that? You know, I'm a Muslim. Am I going to... Uh, and he processed and processed and processed because Muslims are certainly taught to respect Jesus. In fact, Jesus' name is mentioned 110 times in the Quran. Muhammad only four or five. Well, he said, okay, uh, that's the way this goes, and I guess I'm going to have to embrace this. So he went out into the woods, and he got on his knees to pray. That's what good Muslims do. That's what good Christians probably ought to do. Right? He got on his knees to pray, and he said, I received this. He said, I don't know what to do about it, but I'm going to open my heart to this. I received this. So in a little bit of time, uh, he's kind of lost interest in going to the mosque. And some of his friends would say, Muhammad, why aren't you going to the mosque? You're going to get in trouble, man. You're supposed to go to the mosque. He said, ah, oh, you know, I'm sick, or whatever, made excuses. And after a while, he said to the guy that kept bugging him, He said, I've accepted Jesus. He said, Muhammad, your name's Muhammad. You can't do it. What are you, nuts? A guy named Muhammad can't be a Christian? And so the whole village turned out to stone him and kill him. And uh, they went crazy over this guy because he had embraced Jesus. And so he fled the country, Ethiopia. And he went. He ended up in Sudan. And in Sudan, no papers, ended up in prison. And in prison, he sought his own. And when he got around the other Muslims there, he said, by the way, I'm a Christian. And he said, guy named Muhammad can't be a Christian. And so they, started, they tried to kill him in prison. And uh, so he finally escaped somehow, ended up in Denmark, where they didn't need any papers. And got around his own people. And he said, you know what? I'm not telling anybody else I'm a Christian with the name Muhammad. So instead of changing his feet, he changed his name. Changed his name to Emmanuel, 
which means God with us. So there's a, that's cool, isn't that? Cool story. And he was baptized, and he became came, went to he became a missionary to Ethiopia. Today he's over there in North Africa, and he's uh, teaching Muslims about Jesus. It's a big deal if you let it be. <laughs> Say it. If you don't make it a big deal, you probably made a mistake. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to baptize, and on the way that we get the little mechanics, here's what I want you to do to help me do this. You go like this and hold your nose, and I'll grab you by here. And then when I go like that, it would help me a lot if you would bend your knees, especially especially you big guys. If you would just let your knees go back, then I will i won't have such a hard time getting you down and getting you back up. And then when you start back up, you either put your feet under you or I'm just going to let you float away. <laughs> but I'm going to say, buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk, newness of life. And uh, I suggest to you that you make this day a, a enormously special day of Right? It's a new beginning, a new journey. And I'm going to get in the water and test it and see how it is. You come last. Last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Nice and warm? Yes, sir. Boy, you'll love this. <laughs> this is when you come up out of here, you can make you feel born again, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, boy. Uh, I guess you just uh, come on up, and when you get up, somebody will tell you where to go to get down. Uh, hey, does anyone object to be, uh, you're having a picture taken? No. Uh, anyone? Uh, good, good question. Thank you. Welcome to the asylum. I'm going to go like this. <laughs> you go like this, and when, I'm, when I take you down, you can rip, okay? I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Buried in the likeness of his death. Raised to walk in the name of his life. God bless you. Do he Woohoo! <laughs> Do it just like he did. baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of his death. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah let's, get, let's get the small ones out of the way first. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, come down, now. Come on, now. Come on, now. Got it, out. Come on, now. Just jump on in. Woo One more step. Oh, <laughs> See, this is going to make you feel like a new man. Yes, it will. <laughs> All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll let you know. All right. No, 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 no. I, have I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of his death. All right. Woo! <laughs> you got to watch that. Is that all right? That's all right. I don't care if you don't care. <laughs> Baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Buried in the likeness of his death. Raised to walk. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, my. I'm up for this. I'll call you. I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Pray the likeness of his death. about my white legs. <laughs> <laughs> I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Buried in the likeness of his death. Raised to 
keep walking. All right, amen. All right, woo! Hallelujah. Baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Carried the likeness of his death. Praise to God. All right. Who's this, Charles? My son. Who's who's your son? Yeah. Right. Josh. Baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Buried in the likeness of his death. Amen. Pastoring, and yet there's room. All right, let's pray. We've got to thank you for these men. decisions that they've made. I'm sure you're way more excited about this than you've got. Are you going to help every person here on their journey? And help me to help them the best I can. And I pray that you'll give them all good success in their lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> You just made your people real happy for you. <laughs> Jeanette, how do you feel? <laughs> well, good. Can't wipe your nose on a wet shirt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got for your son. <laughs> but hey, you got to 